All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining this webinar covering the automated design of cooling channels. Leveraging cloud-based CFD with design automation software. So thank you very much for joining us today. My name is Steve Lene. I'm the Application Engineering Manager at SimScale, and I'm going to be your host today. Today's presenters are Andrew and Hyrie. Andrew is the Product Manager and Partnerships Manager at Cinera. And uh, as well as being a software partnership lead, where he helps to bring to market solutions for customers' pains using internally developed solutions, he also le leverages the partner's solutions, and he's spent the last 10 years working for a variety of engineering software companies, including Autodesk, Entopology, Hexagon, and now Cinera. And Hyrie is an application engineer at SimScale. He has a background in civil engineering, and he studied computational mechanics at the Technical University of Munich. We also have Lorenzo here today, he developed the plugin for Cinera and SimScale at his company, Raphos. So a bit of housekeeping first before we get into it. Today's webinar will be approximately 30 minutes in duration, and we'll start with an introduction to the application and an introduction to SimScale. We'll then move on to an introduction to Cinera, followed by a demonstration of the case that we're looking at today. Finally, we'll wrap up with five minutes of Q&A and some next steps. Please use the chat panel to introduce yourself and to ask any questions as we go through. And just as a reminder, in case you try and speak to us, your microphones will remain muted for the duration of this presentation. Okay, so what is the case that we're going to look at today? Well, just to position it, manufacturers need to design cooling channels for dyes and molding equipment to increase cycle time while meeting the stringent quality assurance objectives that they have set. However, often the design of the cooling channels is restricted by the industry best practices. If they go through a process of optimizing these cooling channels, the complex nature can pose design and manufacturing challenges. It requires advanced manufacturing techniques. One common pain point is the limited exploration of optimum cooling channel designs due to the complexity and time and cost constraints that the project has. Therefore, traditionally, industries have relied on one or 2D simulations of simplified models to save time and resources. In many cases, they go on best practice of what they've designed before. And this limits the exploration of innovative new designs that they could look at. Therefore, designers can benefit from fast and accurate design of experiment studies on a large range of different cooling channel designs, leveraging automation workflows from Cinera and harnessing the power of running these simulations in the cloud via SimScale. So let's have a look at how to automate the design process of cooling channels. The workflow that we're going to look at today is an example of how this design space can be explored and optimized. The case study that we're looking at is actually an automotive carpet molding die. And the cooling channels required for this have to be conforming to the shape. It's a very complex, non-uniform shape. So the process that we're going to look at firstly uses Cinera to generate different conforming cooling channel designs, varying from traditional serpentine designs to more unique bio-inspired leaf vein type designs. And this process just takes a few minutes to set up and run in Cinera. Then the designs are passed to SimScale to simulate the thermal performance of the different designs. In this case, all 30 of the generated designs are run in parallel in the cloud directly from Cinera, and the results are got back within an hour. 
This connection is thanks to the plugin that's available directly through Scenera that connects Scenera and SimScale. Thank you to Lorenzo at Raphos for developing that plugin. Finally, once all these simulations have been run, the results can be analyzed in Scenera to identify the Pareto optimal design with user-defined objective functions. So this whole process is conducted by one single engineer using one interface. All they need to use is Scenera. The SimScale simulations are run in the background and the whole thing is completed in just over an hour's time. So a whole design process is completed. This is just one example. And I hope you can see how this could be applied to your design processes. This can obviously be tailored to any process that you want to optimize and design. So first of all, before I hand over to Andrew, let's have a very brief introduction to SimScale. So SimScale makes high fidelity engineering simulation software. And importantly, we make simulation technology that's economically feasible. The key points that I want to make here is that we make simulation accessible at any scale. SimScale is in the cloud. So all you need to run SimScale is a web browser. And we enable engineers to simulate without compromising. There's no limits on the complexity or the size of the simulation or the number of simulations that you can run in parallel. Also, we deliver the best in class solvers and user experience with on demand support. And the platform has streamlined workflows paired with high fidelity physics solvers. All right, that's enough of an introduction from me. I'm now going to hand over to Andrew to take you through an introduction to Scenera. Thanks, Steve. Let's go ahead and get the slides up. Uh, thanks so much for that warm introduction. It's a pleasure to be here today and get a chance to talk to everyone about um, the work we've done together between uh, Scenera, SimScale, and Raffles. Just a bit of background um, on Scenera and who we are and what, what problem we're trying to solve for the market here today. Um, I think if we look at the way that products are designed and manufactured today, we'll see that they're very much the same processes that we saw decades ago. And what we're lo looking to do is apply the changes that we've seen from the software engineering industry into the hardware development market by accelerating the ability to reuse and connect different tools together um, to really allow for engineers, mechanical engineers, design engineers to more rapidly design and analyze their products. Um, today, we see the problem as being uh, approximately $300 billion a year wasted in lost uh, efficiencies. Um, Part of this comes from the fact that engineers are constantly having to repeat the same manual job over and over again. I have friends that they've worked at uh, certain companies and they say they go in every day and they do more or less the same thing over and over again. And I think we also see that this um, time repeating the same task over and over is, is not only a waste of engineering knowledge, it, it's a bit of a demoralizer for, uh, for the worker having to go through and keep repeating this task. And what we want to do at Scenera is really eliminate these manual jobs. And so if we jump to the next slide, we can see the, the vision and mission here for Scenera. So we fundamentally believe that the way that products are designed and manufactured will change and frankly needs to change, right? We need to go from the 90s to the 2020s. Um, and then to do that, we need to take engineers along with us and that the fact that uh, designs no longer have to be this manual process. Analysis doesn't have to be this ma highly manual intensive process. What we want to do with Scenera is create connected engineering workflows to really enable engineers to automate their design processes, automate their analysis processes, automate their reporting processes by tying together all of the tools that they use in their typical working environment, connecting those with intelligent algorithms like artificial intelligence. Maybe you've even seen some of the stuff we've done with ChatGPT enabling you to generate reports. Um, all of these things will come together to allow engineers to really build products 
um, faster, more efficiently, because this is what the market needs. We need to be able to respond better to you know the challenges that we've seen over the past years with the supply chain to redesign parts so that they're more supply chain uh, supply chain tolerant or capture engineering knowledge as the workforce changes and people leave companies um, and switch jobs more frequently. We want to make sure that knowledge is uh, still being able to be reused um, in an engineering process. So what we're going to look at today um, is a workflow that one of my colleagues, Max, put together where we're going to um, automate the design of cooling channels and an analysis of them uh, within Scenario by connecting multiple um, products together. So the input inputs to this process, they can be Excel data, CAD geometry, um, mesh files, simulation data, that's all going to start to feed into our process of designing the cooling channels. Then um, Max, actually part of his uh, master's thesis, developed this logic to design these channels and generated a variety of algorithms that we're now able to reuse inside Scenario. So we'll dive a little bit into what that process looks like and how you can capture and reuse knowledge with Scenario. And then thanks to Lorenzo and his work uh, generating the connector for SimScale, we can now connect um, the SimScale CFD solvers into a Scenario workflow and process. And we'll have an understanding of how that works, how we can use these nodes to create analyses, as well as use them for design of experiments to really explore the solution space for this part. And then in the end, we'll do a bit of uh, post-processing, um, but really the, um, the core here is gonna be capturing some of those key KPIs to really give us an assessment of which of these designs we wanna move forward with and maybe take a, a closer look at uh, within the SimScale platform. So I'll pass it back to um, Hari now um, to share a bit about what's going on from the SimScale side. Perfect, thanks Andrew, and a warm welcome from my side to everyone attending today in the webinar. So we've seen now a very quick overview of the project synopsis from the Scenario point of view, which we will dive as well into deeper in the live demo. But now let's take a look on what are we doing behind the scenes in SimScale for those simulations that we are running. So let's remind ourselves very quickly, what is the goal that we are trying to do? For any particular case regarding cooling channels, we always start with an empty casting mold, right? And we need to figure out what is the best cooling channels layout that allows us to ensure uniform cooling. Why? Because we need to reduce the warpage. We can optimize the energy efficiency too by minimizing the pressure drop. And it's very important as well to reduce the cooling cycle times because if we scale this up and we talk about mass production, it becomes very important that even a reduction in seconds in the cooling process would result in profit in the end. Now, here I'm showing one example of those simulations that we have run. So the boundary conditions, or basically the setup of those uh, simulations is consistent among all of them so that we can get data that actually makes sense. So at the top boundary, we see a velocity inlet at one meters per second. The coolant is supplied at six Celsius degrees. At the bottom, we have a flow outlet pressure and on the top surfaces of this casting mold, we have a surface heat load of 250 watts per meter squared that represents the heat source that we are trying to cool. Now, we've ran in total 26 different simulations completely automated directly in Scenario. We ran them through the SimScale API. Those are on the bio-inspired uh, cooling channel layout. We've ran as well some uh, simulations on the serpentine cooling channel, which I'll discuss the results comparison between those two later in the presentation. Now, that's it from the project synopsis regarding SimScale. Now I'll pass over again back to Andrew so that we can start the live demo process. All right. So hopefully everyone can now see um, the Scenario platform here. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with Scenario, um, the interface is uh, a low-code environment. So on the left-hand side, we have the canvas where we can create some nodes. So maybe we want to do addition here and let's zoom in and we can see that. And on the right hand side, we have the viewport, which is pretty familiar for most folks that have worked with a CAD or FEA tool, um, where we're going to be able to visualize some 3D geometry. But real quick, if we look here on the, the canvas, we can start to do a few different things. So maybe we just want to add a few numbers together, obviously a pretty uh, trivial operation but let's just see how that would look here. And again, I can very quickly add nodes uh, to my canvas. And let's just say, I wanna add five 
and five. And we can see the result obviously is 10. Now, typically your typical engineering tasks aren't gonna be so trivial as adding two numbers together, but hopefully this gives you a little idea of how this environment works. So let's jump over to the cooling channel workflow. And obviously this is a much more interesting engineering problem than adding two numbers together. Um, so what we're gonna look at is the process of generating uh, the cooling channels. And let me just turn this off. And we can see here are the results of the analysis we did from um, with one of our optimized designs. But this entire process, as we saw before, is encapsulated inside the scenario workflow, inside the scenario canvas, whether it's uh, the post-processing of results, setting up boundary conditions, or the actual generation of the geometry. Um, the nice thing here is that this is all represented in a visual manner. You can see that we add some comments here in different places to help other users understand uh, what's going on within this workflow. As I mentioned, I wasn't the engineer that put this workflow together today. It was my colleague, Max. Um, the nice thing is that I'm able to pick up and easily understand what's going on here. So this whole process um, started, let's get rid of our, our simulation results here. Um, this whole process started with importing uh, CAD geometry. Um, and this is our starting form of the mold that we wanna use here. Now I'm not gonna go into the details of every, uh, every node that we're using on the canvas here, but we start to extract a different geometry in different points, whether we wanna grab a surface that we want to generate actually our cooling channels along, or um, other uh, geometric aspects that we're gonna use within the optimization process. So as we move through this workflow, we can start to see um, different areas where we start to provide inputs. Now, my colleague Max has created this own function within Scenario, so not just limited to the capabilities that we ship um, off the shelf, but he's created his own function to really uh, generate the paths um, that we're gonna use to, for these cooling channels. And then he has another function to actually optimize the layout of those. So let's take a look at what some of this looks like. So the inputs to the process here, of course, are gonna be our tool body. We're gonna to wanna to have some start and endpoints. Um, if we look here, we can see some two different mesh geometry. This is where our inlets and outlets are gonna be applied uh, to our geometry as we create all of this inside Scenario. So the nice part about Scenario is not only can we import CAD geometry, but we also have full access to the Parasolid um, modeling kernel. So you can actually generate actual CAD geometry uh, inside Scenario, not just meshes. Um, right, and so what we're gonna end up with again is we're gonna end up with this geometry here as a full BREP model. Now we can see in this process, we have a number of different variables. Maybe let's take a look. So we have the levels. Um, this is again, fully user definable here with the sliders. And we can see these are just the bifurcation points, the number of bifurcations that we have within this cooling channels that we've generated, as well as some values to tweak the angles at which um, these channels start to split from one another. Um, what's nice is if we actually go down, we'll take a look at maybe some of the unoptimized uh, channels. If I uh, drop down here, we can see the initial curves that we generate from this process, right? Looking quite a bit different than the initial geometry that we had here. Um, but again, Max has encapsulated his knowledge into how to optimize um, these cooling channels into the process here. And now we can actually see that we end up with uh, d more refined channels, smoother channels. And the whole point of this now is we end up with a set of curves here that we're actually gonna use to generate the solid geometry. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hide the display of these and let's jump back up to the, the workflow here and we can actually see we've generated a few uh, functions here to generate the channel geometry. This is starting with all of our curves, right? Uh, we want to define some inlets, some radiuses um, for these for this geometry. And then at the end, we end up with our final geometry that we're going to use in our analysis process. All right, all of this through user encapsulated knowledge, leveraging the functions inside Scenario. Now, the next step of the process, obviously, we need to analyze this and understand, but the nice part about Scenario is we also have the ability to do design explorations. So in this case, we can set up a few different parameters. I mentioned the, the levels, 
the number of bifurcations that we have in this process. And that can be one of the design variables that we have in our design exploration, as well as that split value, the, the amount that these um, channels are kind of separating from one another. Also a value that we're able to explore in our design exploration. Uh, Harry mentioned earlier, we ran uh, approximately 30 different analyses, and that came from this design of experiments that's built in here. So we're just gonna take a look at this one example, which we thought was uh, the one with the lowest pressure drop, and let's step through the process now of getting that set up in SimScale. Um, so we've generated a, a few values here that we wanna start to use based on uh, the input geometry. We're gonna end up with a, a project name as well as some data that we're gonna start to pass into setting up the boundary conditions for SimScale. And this is where we start to see some of the nodes that have been created uh, by Lorenzo and Abafos, where we start to construct models for SimScale, right? So we can start to uh, plug in and connect the different regions that we've defined, obviously for applying uh, different loads and boundary conditions um, that we shall highly uh, mention early in the presentation. We have uh, full access to being able to mesh the model using uh, SimScale. Obviously, this is all happening on the cloud, and we're just receiving back some some REST calls to help us understand. Um, the, the status of different operations as we go through uh, the workflow here. But you can see it's a pretty typical simulation process thanks to the SimScale uh, API that's accessible there where we upload geometry, perform some meshing operations. Um, we're gonna update our model and then we're gonna run the simulation with the, the boundary conditions that we've applied to our geometry. In this case, we can see it took about 16 minutes now. Imagine that 16 minutes applied happening in parallel to uh, 30 different uh, analyses for our parts here. And of course, we can go back and pull our results and, and look at different uh, values, um, results fields for our geometry. So let's turn that off. And again, we can see one where we've uh, taken a look at the, the pressure actually uh, inside uh, the cooling channels that we have here. And again, the nice part, this is fully um, parameterized. So as we have multiple design iterations, as we change inputs, this whole process can cascade and regenerate the results from our process here, um, thanks to all of this being a connected workflow. No, no manual interactions required here. Um, again, we also have the ability to visualize uh, some results. Uh, if we want to visualize temperature fields, um, things like that, that's all possible uh, inside Scenario. Now, obviously, there's a, a lot more capabilities that you need when uh, trying to maybe post-process results or analyze some of these results. Maybe you want to look at some transient analyses, which I know Hari has run on a few of the uh, cooling channels that we have here. So I'm going to pass it over back to Hari um, to show us some of the more in-depth um, capabilities of the SimScale platform. Cool, oh, perfect. Thanks, Andrew. Um, I'm quite thrilled that now we are in an age where such automations are actually possible because it really streamlines the workflow quite well. And um, now just give me one second to share my screen and we can take a look behind the scenes now what is really happening inside SimScale regarding those simulations. Cool, here we go. So I assume that at this moment you are seeing my screen. Yes. Perfect, perfect. So right now I am inside the SimScale dashboard. So before getting into the dashboard and then looking at the SimScale simulation, let me just provide you with a small intro to SimScale itself. So SimScale is a cloud native solution, right? And all you need to access it is a web browser and an internet connection, which means that you can literally run simulations from anywhere in the world. Now, when you, in, when you access the SimScale dashboard via your username and password, you get access to all of the projects that you have worked on. You can organize everything in folders. You can share projects with your colleagues, etc. Now, in this case, we are interested in the automated conforming cooling channel design, which is here we selected one of the simulations that we have automated in Scenario to basically just get a much more granular level of details on the results directly in the SimScale platform. So over here, we see the design of the particular cooling channels. We'll start first by taking a look at some of the results and then see how we can set up something like this inside SimScale. And this should give you an idea as well of how those are set up in the workflow and scenario. So those nodes that Andrew just shown really corresponds to the simulation setup that we see over here. 
Now, if we take a look at the results, what I'm looking at at the moment is the transient solution of this particular problem. So this simulation had been ran for a total of 240 seconds, which is four minutes of time. And there are so many details that we can get out of the simulation. Namely, we can directly check the uniformity of the cooling. We can check for the uh, heat flux. We can check for the pressure drop, compare it with the other designs with the different layouts. We will see in a moment, we compare this with the serpentine cooling channel layout and just get useful insight of how we can make the best design decision an educated one for such processes. So over here, something that I would really like to uh, highlight is I want to point out how complex and curvy this geometry is. And with this particular solution that we are providing, it's really just taking the effort needed to put to figure out how to lay out channels that are going to follow the curvature of this plate. So now if we take a look inside this, we can see that the actual cooling channels are equidistant from the top two surfaces, and it's just completely automated for a large scale of different um, cooling channels. Like as Andrew just shown, you can control the number of the branches that you get out of this design, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it is a deep world to explore, and now you are the experts. We provide you with the tools, and you can really just dive in and figure out what's the best way to import this, along with our help, into your design workflow. Oh. Now, let me shift gears and talk about the simulation setup very quickly before we summarize the results in the slides. Now, when you are inside SimScale, Sim, something that you should know is that SimScale is a multi-physics platform. So we offer different ranges of physics for different applications. And those should also give you an idea of where this workflow that we are proposing for which applications can be suited, for example, we provide ranges of all flow, different simulations. We couple the thermal and flow, which is exactly the case that we have over here. You can even run structural simulations and electromagnetics, which is coming very soon. Now, regarding the simulation setup, let's go again and create one of those simulations. We see over here when we create one, we get prompted with what we call the simulation tree. And this is essentially just your guide on how to set up the simulation. You start from top to bottom, Everything that is read means that an action needs to be taken and so on. For the interest of time, I'll show you the setup of one of the simulations that we've run. Over here, the transient simulation on this particular model. So of course, the first step, we need to decide on the materials. So in this case, the fluid that we are using is actually water. But this, of course, this can be changed. So sometimes we use coolants as water plus glycol and so on. So you can just change the material properties and so on. For the boundary conditions, of course, you get a set of different boundary conditions that allows you to really capture the physics of what's happening in real life. In this case, I'll just show you, for example, now the application of the uh, velocity inlet boundary condition. And over here, we had a velocity of minus one meters per second. But let's say that after I ran those studies, I figured out one design, which is the best. And now I want to take this design iteration to the next stage. So maybe I want to run a sweep over different design velocities so that I can understand how I can minimize the pressure drop or essentially how much velocity, uh, how much flow velocity do I need to ensure the cooling that I'm after. In this case, I'm putting three inputs, but this is very easily scalable up to 100 inputs. Essentially, now after you do this, you go ahead and you run the simulation. What's happening is since SimScale is completely run on the cloud, all of those simulations are now running in parallel at the same time. So the time it takes for one to finish is the same time it takes for those three to finish. And that's exactly the point that Andrew highlighted sometime earlier, where he mentioned the optimization process. We are running those 30 simulations, directly firing them off from the scenario workflow, and they are running via the API. And exactly something like this is happening behind the scenes. All of those simulations are running in parallel at the same time, which really cuts down the amount of time and effort needed to bring such uh, useful simulation outputs to you. Now, when you are using SimScale, something that should always be remembered is that you are never alone when you use SimScale. And I say this because of this in-product chat, which basically you can write us any message, hi, I need help in X and Y. And then one of the SimScale engineers will get in touch with you and reply back in hopefully a matter of few minutes and assist you on your workflow. And then if you decide to share the project with SimScale support, then this unlocks even a higher level of support that we can provide, where we can basically now look at your project live, inspect your boundary conditions with you, take a look at the results, and just make sure that you get a successful outcome 
of what you are trying to achieve. Now, that's mainly it from what I wanted to show regarding the SimScale platform. We, we made a quick summary now of how the simulation is actually set up. Now, let me jump back to the presentation and summarize the results. Cool. So now you are seeing the, uh, the slides again. So let's see from this analysis that we have shown, what sort of results are we getting? So over here, we have now the performance evaluation of the 26 different bio-inspired cooling channel layouts that we have ran represented by this Pareto um, analysis. So on the y-axis, we have the average temperature in Celsius degrees, and on the x-axis, we have the pressure drop in Pascals. And now this really provides the designer with a clear view on which particular cooling channel layout actually performs best for those two parameters. Of course, we are not limited to those two parameters. You can investigate other different parameters like the actual uniformity by checking, for example, maybe the standard deviation of the temperatures from a certain value. You can also check the wall heat flux and so on. So it's really large the scale of what you can achieve with this. And from here, if we select one design and then we take it for a further analysis, which is exactly what I'm gonna do in the next slide, we can now compare two different cooling channel layouts. So maybe at the beginning, let's say I, um, we had those two different designs, the serpentine and the, uh, the serpentine on the left-hand side and the bio-inspired on the right-hand side. We clearly see from this analysis that the serpentine cooling channel layouts actually perform better when it comes to uniformity of cooling and when it comes also to the average temperature of the tool body. In the bio-inspired, we see that the temperature is almost one Celsius degrees higher. However, the serpentine cooling channel, the pressure drop is almost 40% more than the one in the bio-inspired. Now, we are not really showing this to, to show that the serpentine is better than the bio-inspired or one of the two. We are really showing this to really show you that regardless of which cooling channel layout you decide to use, the tool can adapt to it and provide you with the insights that you need to run such problems. Now, to summarize this presentation, I'll hand over now to Andrew to discuss the summary and outro. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I think you really hit the nail on the head there that you know the, the goal of this is not to say that the um, generative style is better than the serpentine style, but I think one of the biggest challenges that we see in the industry is that people don't have enough time to simply make a solid evaluation of different approaches, right? If we think about a typical project, you're, you have a time deadline, right? You have a couple of weeks where you need to make a decision on which approach you're gonna go with. And I think what we've seen here by the combination of Scenera with the automation workflows and the uh, scalability of SimScale and being able to run all of these uh, analyses on the cloud is really you're able to come to that decision-making point much faster within the timeline that you have to say, okay, actually, I can't go with the, the the generative approach because it's actually less performant on the criteria that I need, right? And what we see is that, you know, a typical uh, design approach, you're gonna be able to do one iteration every four to five days, right? And you've got to manually start constructing this in your CAD tool. Your CAD engineer is gonna to need to pass something over to the analysis team. They're gonna to have to set up the analysis um, get it uh, maybe running on a local machine, maybe they're gonna queue it up on the HPC. And this all takes a few days to go through the process. You know, we're interfacing with multiple different software tools, multiple users are gonna have to uh, generate uh, the analysis outcomes, the CAD geometry. Um, so really in the span of a couple of weeks, you've got maybe only two or three opportunities to make uh, real evaluations of different designs and different um, design approaches. Now with Scenera, what we've done is we're able to do uh, an iteration essentially every 20 minutes. Um, we've got one UI that the user needs to interact with, and we can have multiple engineers coming together to store their knowledge in a single engineering workflow to eliminate the need for handovers, right? So once those um, design process has been created, Max had created the design process for us to generate these cooling channels, we can then automatically reuse that and start to iterate through different design possibilities. And so in this case, you know, we could do over 500 different designs in the span of a, a two week project, whereas before we could only get to two or three. And that really uh, enables you to come to the conclusion of which approach is the best approach um, to, to use moving forward. And I think that really speaks to the 
the power of, of combining these two products uh, together. And I think now we have a bit of time for Q&A, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, that's indeed correct. So let's jump in now to the Q&A session. And allow me just a few, a moment to read through the questions and select a few ones. Cool. So we have one question, uh, which is how to set up the connection between Scenera and SimScale? Um, I can answer that. Uh, Lorenzo, do you want to answer it as you've, you've created this connection? Sure. sure. Um, so um, maybe if you can go back uh, um, to your to, um, workflow. Here? Yeah, to the workflow. Yeah, so um, what we've tried to, to achieve with this is to create nodes uh, that are simple enough uh, but also powerful enough to give you the possibility to basically build any uh, workflow in terms of CFDs. Now, this means that, um, you know, you've got components uh, like just to create a new project, you've got a, a node to um, set up a simulation, uh, a node to uh, define boundary conditions, and each one by themselves, you know, they are just very monadic operations, but then you can construct very complex workflows as the one we're seeing here. Uh, and hopefully with those, uh, you can build uh, uh, anything. Um, of course, you know, we are still building uh, new nodes, uh, trying to expose basically all the APIs that SimScale is giving us. Uh, but in principle, uh, yes, there's a, you know, the sky's the limit. So hope this answers the question. And maybe just an additional comment in terms of the accessibility there. Right, so um, this connector to SimScale is uh, accessible with uh, the token-based licensing system of, of Scenera. Um, you still do need a, a subscription for SimScale. We're just acting as the, the connection point there, um, but it's fully accessible. If uh, you're a Scenera customer today, you can hop on the marketplace and uh, simply download the add-in. Perfect, thanks a lot, um, Andrew and Lorenzo for the uh... For the answers, that it makes it quite clear. Let me read through the questions. We have we have another question, uh, which is: Is the master thesis from Max accessible for public? Are you aware of of this information? Um, I think I'll need to check with Max. I think he just presented it um, within the past week or two. I know he's uh, <laughs> quite, quite happy to be finished, so I'm not sure if it's okay. public or not yet, but. Um, I think we have your contact details. If you've asked a question, we can definitely uh, reach back out to you uh, and share what, what uh, content we can, or maybe even you can have a conversation with Max yourself and understand a bit more of what he's done. Perfect, perfect, cool. Um, another question that we have, which maybe I can take, which is, could we use a temperature field to optimize the channel layout iteratively? So at the moment with this workflow that we are using, we are basically running a design of experiments that is essentially we generate a large space of designs and then we run simulations on those designs. We select the best one, which we take for a second design process. From this design that we select, we can of course utilize the uh, information from the temperature and use those to enhance our next um, design. At the moment, Andrew, please correct me if I'm wrong, but do we have now a feedback loop present, or is this something that we we plan to develop in the um, near future as well? I think the. If, I was going to say I don't think the feedback loop is existing yet for like a closed feed feedback loop optimization um, in the workflow that we've shown, but it should be possible. Um, so Scenario can do what I would call field driven design. So taking some of those. Uh, outcomes from simulation, whether it's a uh, temperature, pressure, and start applying that to the geometry uh, operations and actually start modifying the designs there as well. Um, so that's definitely something that would be possible. Perfect, perfect. Um, let's yes, see uh, now. Yes. Add, uh, to this. Um, yes, please. Uh, I can share a simple example where uh, this feedback loop happens. I've got a simple uh, workflow where uh, um, I managed to do like a, a full workflow 
uh, so it's full optimization loop. So if people are interested, they can share that. Perfect, perfect. Thanks, thanks, Lorenzo. Um, and I mean, of course, uh, for all the attendees, you would have our um, contact details. We will provide you with means to contact us, both Scenario and SimScale. So please feel free to propose all of your questions as well that we don't manage to answer due to time limits in this, and we would be more than happy to assist you and provide you with more information on those details. Yeah, I would say to that, if, if there's somebody interested uh, in addition to seeing Lorenzo's co closed loop uh, optimization, drop a comment uh, so that we know to reach out to you and share that, that information uh, directly with you. Perfect. Um, another question that we have, there is a lot of questions, so I apologize in advance if I don't manage to read your question, um, going through with, over them. So there is a question which is, is also air available as fluid? The answer is of course, because in the SimScale platform, essentially when you're running those simulations, we provide a default material library for different ranges of fluids, gases, uh, and actual fluids like, I don't know, water, gas, air, um, nitrogen, whatever. So you have access to run with any particular fluid that you like. And even if the fluid that you would like to run your simulation on is not existent in the SimScale material library, you can modify the material settings accordingly and run with whatever you use for your cooling processes. So the answer is yes. Um, let's see more questions. We have a question regarding Scenario. Can you share the workflow in Scenario? Um, I think we should be able to share it with existing users. I need to double check with a few folks um, to make sure. Uh, but again, uh, I think we should have your contact details as you posed a question um, and we'll try to reach out to you after the webinar. And uh, if we can't share the scenario file directly with you, I think we can let you take a, a deeper look uh, in a personalized demo. Perfect. Um, another question that we have, is this general process limited to CFD simulations or could this also be done with some structural analysis? The answer is it's not limited to CFD simulations. That's exactly, for example, Lorenzo at the time, he developed this tool that connects our CHT or conjugate heat transfer solver for coupling fluid and thermal simulations. We have API also for structural simulations in SimScale. So this is really not limited to a particular simulation type. The API is there, the simulations exist, the workflows and scenarios exist. It's really up to your request and we are more than happy to help you in developing such a workflow for you so that you can optimize your processes and so on. And I think to, to add to that, I mean, um, one of the beauties of Scenario is the ability to connect to a variety of different tools. Um, so uh, connections to uh, other engineering software tools are definitely possible to tie this into the in entire process here, whether they're cloud-based or desktop-based applications. Typically, we can find a way to connect those into Scenario. Um, let me keep going through the list of questions. Probably we can take two more questions and... Um... Then we call it today. Um, so let me see, what do we have? Um, we have a question about what sort of CAD formats are accessible in both Scenario and SimScale. So basically people do not work with one CAD tool everywhere. So basically I can start first with the SimScale part and then maybe I can pass to you Andrew to to address the scenario part. So SimScale supports almost all native CAD formats. Um, and this could be from any sort of CAD tool provider like SolidWorks, um, Katia, Autodesk Inventor, and so on. And of course, we also support um, generic CAD formats like IGS, Stop, Step, and uh, STL. And from the scenario point of view? Yeah, so I think um, just like SimScale, we're able to import uh a large variety of CAD formats from all of the major uh, CAD tools. The the next step that we go with Scenario is obviously we have the parasolid kernel um, baked in. So these um, cooling channels that you saw here, we could actually export those out as a parasolid file, a regular CAD file um, that you could load and import into an X or another tool. Um, in addition, we also have um, the ability to control parametrically um, certain CAD programs. So if you want to connect to uh, to Creo or an X or Solid Edge um, and play with some of those parameters that you've already defined in your CAD file within your Scenario workflow, that's possible today inside Scenario. 
Perfect. Um, now, I think this is it from our side today. I really appreciate every one of you who joined the session today. We hope that this was useful. Um, feel free to reach out to us and you will receive an email in a few days with the recording. And uh, yeah, thank you all for attending and I wish you a beautiful day ahead. Take care. Ciao. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.